Welcome back, Fanatics. I'm Giles, and this is Home Theater Fanatics. So today, we're gonna take a look at the M&K X12 Plus Part two, that's right, there was a part one, and in that video, we unboxed the sub, we looked at the specs of the sub, talked about it a bit, but today, we're gonna dig deep, see what I did there, and we're gonna actually measure this subwoofer, we're gonna hook it up, I'm gonna tell you about some of the specific configuration that you're gonna wanna think about, we're gonna listen to a handful of demos that will put this thing through its paces, and then I'm gonna tell you what I think at the end, and I'm super excited because I'm gonna try and blow this thing up, so we'll see what happens. So, if you're a physician, go ahead and call that anesthesiologist because you're gonna to wanna to put your patients asleep so you can pay attention for about the next 15 minutes. To kick things off, let's talk a little bit through the setup of this subwoofer so you can kind of understand how we're gonna measure this thing and how we're gonna to listen to it. Remember, as I measured, it's gonna be in the standard spot uh, in the home theater fanatics basement theater, uh, but the settings for every sub are a little bit different because everyone has some different features. So um, from a connectivity point of view, I'm using a balanced input coming off my um, Acurus Act 4. Down here we've got power, and then there are three different settings here uh, for your power, and I'm just gonna leave it powered on. So this thing's gonna be on all the time during testing. Um, I'm gonna set my phase to zero. I'm not gonna try and do any time alignment. I'm just measuring the sub, so I don't need to worry about that. Now, this, uh, this setting is one that you need to pay attention to uh, because this is the crossover. And if you're gonna be using an upstream processor or AVR, uh, and that's what we're gonna be doing here, um, we're gonna set it to no low pass, meaning that it's just gonna play whatever is sent to it from your AVR processor. If you need to adjust this stuff, you can uh, set it in the middle and you can spin this knob around, uh, continuously variable and select your crossover or you can just go 80 hertz, bam. But for us, we got a processor, we're gonna be down here. Uh, like I said, balanced input. Now, this setting is the EQ and that's baked into the subwoofer and it's not defeatable in any way that I can see. So I'm gonna actually test with both of these settings, uh, the THX base EQ and the anechoic uh, EQ, MK EQ. Uh, and we'll find out what those do a little bit later during in the, in the measurement section, so stay tuned for that. And then here, uh, the level, um, I'm just gonna kick this all the way up and I'm gonna set it to variable. So if I need to spin it down, I can, but I'm gonna leave it there uh, for the testing. Um, not gonna leverage the RCA inputs or any of the pass-throughs for this. So you've just got your two connections in. Um, we're gonna go zero on the phase, no crossover. We'll play with both of the EQs, and then we'll go ahead and pump this up uh, to its maximum output. Now it's time to talk measurements. And uh, just so you know, um, these measurements are recorded in the, my standard fashion, so you can directly compare these to all of my recent subwoofer measurement videos, so you can kind of compare things. Uh, now remember, the decibels aren't reflective of what you'll get in your room, right? Because you might be closer or further away or run things hotter or softer. Um, you know, my goal is to try and find kind of what the curve looks like and relatively how loud it gets. Um, but I really wanna see what the performance looks like across the entire curve and if there are any issues. Um, now, in my room, there's always a dip right around 37, 63, and 76 hertz, right? And if we check, there's a 38, so right there at 37, and then this one is 64 uh, from the 63 that I usually see, and then right here at 77. So yeah, so this is, these all of these, areas are room induced. So the curve would continue pretty much straight across here um, in a, a anechoic chamber or if I had done a ground plane measurement outside. So um, just remember those three dips have nothing to do with the subwoofer. Uh, you'll see them in all of my measurements. Um, all right, so on this sub, remember this is a dual 12, so two 12s in one box. And, um, and there are two different EQ settings that you have to choose between. Um, there's no way for me to find a non-EQ'd setting, um, but I think the EQ is what really is magic for the subwoofer because I tried to blow this thing up. I pushed it as hard as I freaking could to see if I could make it skip a beat. And uh, with a lot of subs, you know, that are just uh, 
amplification and driver, you can you can cause some damage. You can you can screw them up. But the EQ that's built into this thing really was able uh, to control things so that no matter what I did, I, I can't kill it. Um, but uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later as you see the measurements kind of uh, materialize before you. But I want to show the difference in the two EQ settings. So everything is the same here except that I have flipped the EQ between these two measurements. And let me see if I can find this other one. All right. So uh, the dial, my setting was set at 35, uh, which means nothing. Although on my Accurus processor, uh, every click up does equate to about one decibel. So if I went from 35 to 38, you would expect to see three decibel rise in volume in the measurement with REW. So um, this is the difference that is made by the uh, flipping the switch on the back of the subwoofer from the THX EQ, which is this top one, to the anechoic which is this bottom one. And you can see things change, you know, like 63, 64, 62 Hertz, right in this area. And they divert linearly uh, from there. And when you get down here to 10 Hertz, you're, you know, going from, what is this, 76 to 82. So that's about six decibels. So about six decibels in difference, which you get down to 10 Hertz. Uh, now, th this is impressive that we're talking 10 Hertz here on 12, a 12 inch sub. Um, that's really low. I mean, the, here, here you go. This is the end of your hearing and this is all movement of air, right? This is all subsonic down here. Um, and 12, a 12 inch sub is not a large sub for a home theater implementation. Um, you know, there are a lot of people that live by the uh, subs don't start until 18 inches kind of thing. Um, I don't necessarily subscribe to that, but a lot of people do. So let's take a look at these two curves and see what we've got going on here. So in a perfect, wonderful world, you'd want the curve to really stay within a five decibel band. So 85 to 90 or, you know, whatever uh, you're currently measuring at. And if you look at the THX, so, you know, it would be somewhere along here, you know, and, you know, that would, uh, that would keep you pretty much within that band all the way until somewhere around here, around the whole 11 Hertz. So, you know, that's pretty outstanding because remember this dip is uh, room, room and room. So you'd be right, right there. I mean, that's, this thing is really super flat with a little tuning, um, and a slight boost down here at the bottom. This thing would be absolutely razor flat all the way down to 10 Hertz in room. That's, that's outstanding. Um, now with the anechoic, um, you don't get quite as much boost on the low end. Uh, so maybe, maybe this is a music setting and this is a movie setting. I don't know how you want to think about it. Um, but if you find that you need a little extra oomph on the bottom, uh, use the THX and I'm going to, uh, look pretty much at the THX from here on out. Uh, as that I like the way this curve looks and I like that extra super low infrasonic. Um, so let's see what happens as we start taking this thing up. All right, so there's three decibels, there's three decibels, there's three decibels. Now, this is interesting, right? So I look at this and I'm like, huh, you know, is it compression at you know, at 18 Hertz or something that's going on here. And, you know, that was my first thought, but, you know, I, I continued on let's, uh, to see, you know, what, what's happening here. And then here's another three decibels. Here's another three decibels. Here's another three decibels. Now, if you look, you're, you're continuing to see volume increases down here at 10 Hertz. It's not exactly three decibels every time as you move up, there is a little bit of compression going on, but this is, and then up here, this, this uh, area around 50 hertz really matches what you're seeing around the 10 hertz. So this, from my point of view, is all DSP control, right? Uh, so, you know, whoever designed the DSP on the subwoofer said, we know what this thing can do, and we're not going to let you make this thing sound bad. Um, and, and they don't. So they're like, okay, we're going to, you know, we, we, we don't want this uh, 20 decibels, right? Which seems to be where things are kind of centered at. Um, may, maybe it's centered right around here, maybe 20. No, it's like 20 decibels. I think they're like, we're going to start limiting you at 20. Um, so th this is kind of the maximum output that you're going to get out of the unit. Um, and so at your uh, listening position, you know, the decibels that you're getting there, whether it's 95 or 100 or 105, is all going to depend on how far this thing is away from you. Um, so we'll continue on. We did another three, 
did another three, did another three, did another three. And, you know, you can, you can see how things start to compress down a little bit here at the bottom. Um, but if you, if you look, I mean, it, it, the sub is like, we're not getting much louder. We, we kind of, uh, see what's going on, but, um, I think this is just some type of EQ, some kind of band setting EQ that says this is, you know, we're, we're going to limit the, the output. Um, now, would it be nice if we were getting some additional output down here? Sure. Uh, who, who wouldn't want it, right? Um, but this, in result, has made this subwoofer a sub that sounds amazing no matter what you do. I, I, I love it. I mean, I just, I could not make it sound bad. And, you know, I'll show you some of the demos and I push these demos hard and the, this thing, it, it sounded absolutely outstanding. Um, so let's, uh, we'll, we'll do one more run through on these settings, but I'm going to pick the ones with the uh, anechoic EQ. So you can see that, you know, whatever they've done in this EQ design, it's really doing the same thing. So there's a 35, 38, three more. And then every time I add one of these, that's another three decibels. And then you'll see, okay, I think it kicks in right here. Yeah, you can see where it starts to kick in with the with the EQ limiting things and EQ limiting. So it's it's not gonna let you push past that and make the subwoofer sound bad at all. You just, you can't make this thing sound bad. It's just absolutely stupendous. Um, uh, in general, uh, extension down to under 10 Hertz, super, super awesome and uh, you know, with this EQ setting, it kind of gets flatter and flatter and flatter the louder you get with it, which is kind of interesting, right? Um, so, because you'd say, you know, the roll off on the the sub naturally is somewhere around 16 hertz, uh, at least how we can see it. it. It seems like that would be where things are rolling off at. But as you push the volume up and uh, the EQ, the DSP on this is kind of holding things back, here, as you go down, it doesn't control this as much. This gets louder, so it gets flatter and flatter and flatter as you go. Uh, so it's, it's a very interesting um, uh, design choice that they've made here. Uh, but the effect is that, like I said before, uh, you just can't make it sound bad. So uh, this, this gets a thumbs up from me. Now we'll get started with some demos. And the first is the iconic Edge of Tomorrow opener. No matter what I did or how loud I played this, I couldn't make it sound bad. It's just absolutely awesome. And it gets way down there. Now we'll jump over to Blade Runner 2049. And the opening of this one always fulfills my base desires. Um, I call it the eyeball scene. And it just goes absolutely nuts. And if your subs aren't up to the task, you'll absolutely find it out watching this thing. And for the final demo, we'll take a look at John Wick 3 Parabellum. Uh, you know, this doesn't have the low sustained bass rumble notes, but it's got a lot of punchy bass with gunshots, which is pretty cool and can show off your subwoofers. So we put the X12 Plus through the gauntlet. We measured it, we dissected it, and we threw some really hard to reproduce movie clips at it as well. And these are my go-to clips when I really wanna make a subwoofer sound bad. And this sub came out sounding absolutely awesome. Now, one thing we didn't talk about was how does this sub sound like when it's reproducing music? So I did put this in my two channel setup and I did listen to it for a number of hours. And 
it's superlative. I mean, it's really good. Um, for me, you know, I don't really distinguish between a sub in a movie and a sub in music, although uh, maybe that low end extension is more useful in a home theater environment uh, than it is in two channel mode, unless you're listening to some awesome slam and bass heavy music, which I do. So I really want that all the way down to 20 hertz and even under uh, for some music that I listen to because there's some stuff that I've got that does have, uh, you know, that's sub audible content that I want to be able to reproduce and feel in my chest. And this subwoofer does that in spades, no matter whether it's uh, home theater content with some really big explosions or whatever it might be, or some super uh, sub audible bass in music. I got that tactile feeling and it just made me grin and joy. I mean, this sub is so absolutely good. And the thing about this sub that sets it apart from others is that you just can't make it sound bad. There's nothing you can do to make this thing sound bad. The engineers have been so thoughtful in the way that they designed the subwoofer that it's absolutely guaranteed to make your system sound better. You just can't not get better with this subwoofer. Um, I guess you can tell that I give this thing two thumbs up, maybe three. If I go fast enough, does it look like three thumbs up? Uh, but I do, it's, it's really, really good. Um, and this isn't even the best, right? So um, if you think about just raw performance, maybe more of that as being better, there's an X15 Plus that even outdoes this one. It's even, uh, it even has a higher THX certification, the Dominus certification. Uh, so I can't wait to get my hands on that one and see what that can do compared to the X12 Plus. But I can tell you right now, I would be absolutely satisfied to take two of these, drop into my home theater, and enjoy content no matter what it is, music, movies, television, everything. I think that would give me consistent response across my entire seating area and performance down to an under 10 hertz. And these are just 12s. I mean, it's just crazy. And the louder you play it, the better it gets. All right, okay, I think I've gone on enough about this subwoofer. Um, I really, really urge everyone to listen to this thing in person, find some place that's got one up for demo, listen to it so you can hear what I'm hearing and experience what I'm experiencing. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please take a moment and consider subscribing to the channel. Um, in any event, hit like, drop a comment down below, and I hope to see you in the next video.